Kamijo Toma is a completely normal high school boy you'd find anywhere. Except he has at least eight dragons sealed within his right arm. Yeah, there's nothing weird about summoning an army of Yu-Gi-Oh monsters when you bust so hard that your arm falls off. <coughs> I'll be going through each dragon-related entity within Toma by explaining their unique attributes and powers as explained by the editor of the Railgun manga, in addition to covering content which wasn't even included in the anime. Let's start off with the Dragon King, which was the first dragon introduced in the franchise in the Deep Blood arc of a certain magical index, and was also the first of the eight dragons to emerge from Toma in Railgun T. Initially, whether the dragon was real or not was left ambiguous, as it was implied that after Oriolus Izzard severed Toma's arm and started freaking out from his Oscar-level acting, Izzard's powerful Ars Magnus spell worked against him by turning his thoughts into reality, restoring style back to normal, and transforming Toma into a monster which vored him. But eventually, it was finally confirmed it was the real deal, as one of many entities sealed within Imagine Breaker. The description of the Dragon King follows. It specializes in decursing and psychological attacks. If it bites you, you could have your memories destroyed. And this is exactly what happened to Izzard. He did survive the ferocious bite of the dragon, but he also lost all of his memories. How ironic that the guy who had his memories wiped has the power to do the same to his victims. The following dragons all made their debut in Railgun T. When it was finally revealed, there isn't just one dragon Terma has inside. Next on the list is the Blind Dragon. Described as a darkness dragon, it too has a powerful psychological effect, so you'll be overcome with terror and confusion when it's nearby followed by the one-eyed Kerber dragon, a water dragon that summons rainstorms. Its fangs contain the undiluted concept of poison, so anything living it bites will either die or experience a fate worse than death. And the description does not elaborate further. Then the four-eyed dragon. It has multiple eye powers, including illusion and hypnotism powers that can blur the line between dreams and reality. It is also a singer with a beautiful voice that can even shatter shadow metal, which is a mysterious substance which appeared after the dragon's appearance. After that, the Corpse Flame Dragon. It is an undead fire dragon with flames erupting from its bones. It damages things with an energy drain that seemingly burns life force itself. Continuing on with the Ice Crystal Dragon, it is as tough and solid as the planet itself, and it breathes ice. Also, the Spearhead Dragon. It releases lightning from its body and fires lasers from its mouth. And lastly, the Angel Dragon, which has a variety of different abilities showcased in the Railgun manga. And if you don't want to be spoiled on it, skip to here. After the Dragon Strike of the Diocesei, the Angel Dragon seems to have had enough of being stored within Toma, deciding to escape and find a strong power source to latch itself onto, specifically the mysterious Esper called Shundan Kimi. With the dragon attracted by the fact Kimi's strange power caused the creation of a black hole in the universe, Kimi was not able to use the dragon straight away, due to being locked in a juvenile hall with AIM jammers, preventing her from escaping. So this implies the dragons need AIM energy to manifest themselves, or it could just be that Kimi needed to be able to access her own power to then summon the angel dragon. Once she was freed from the facility, we got to see what the angel dragon was capable of. When it showcased a variety of abilities. Although, the dragon may be stronger when it's with Toma, as Imagine Breaker has proved to be a stronger power source in the light novels when compared to a black hole. If the power source does directly affect the strength of the dragons, that is. While Kimi didn't need her arm to be <clears> severed <throat> to use the dragon, her right arm became deformed from using it, becoming very similar to the physical attributes of the dragon itself. This may imply that Imagine Breaker's power to nullify the supernatural is what stops this from happening to Terma himself. The angel dragon can fire a barrage of numerous sharp feathers, which can control others via a form of hypnotism if hit. However, this only works if the victim has also ingested Kimi's blood. Otherwise, it causes the salt in the body to go out of control, which can be lethal over a prolonged period of time. The dragon can also manipulate light from the cross on its head, with anything touching the light turning 
into sodium chloride. Or salt, for those of us who aren't nerds. As expected, the dragon has enhanced physical attributes, being able to withstand multiple large railgun blasts. It can also use part of its wings to strike its enemies. Notably, when the dragon was separated from Kimi's large power source, it began to crumble, leaving only a skeleton, which was then destroyed by Misaka. It is currently unknown whether the angel dragon perished in this moment or found its way back to Toma. Also, I'm going to make a YouTube short about the most brutal and savage use of a magic breaker ever from the light novel so if you want to see me talk more about that then you should definitely subscribe to the channel and i will also make more videos about the powers within toma's arm that you do not want to miss now that covers all eight dragons from the iconic railgun scene but did you know that 16 total dragons were actually designed for the railgun manga with only half of them being chosen for the final scene probably because eight are far easier to draw than 16. While it may appear that the unused eight designs were seemingly discarded for good, that isn't necessarily the case. As confirmed by the editor of the Railgun manga on Twitter, the dragons we didn't get to see in Railgun are actually canon. Yep, including this very sus looking one, which probably spawned a series of What's this? Memes. And this one looks like one of the creepy ass worms from King Kong. But seriously, why didn't they show up in Railgun if they are actually legit parts of the Toaru universe? Well, the Railgun editor mentions that the number of dragons which appear depends on the level of threat Terma is facing. Only one appeared against Izard, as without his OP spell, he's just a normal human, but against a huge black ball of energy that was threatening to destroy Academy City and more, eight of them were required to neutralize and consume it. So against an even bigger force, who knows, we might see the other eight, and maybe more we haven't even seen the designs of. It truly makes me wonder how many dragons are actually present in Toma, and what is the significance behind their different appearances and their true identities. There have been many theories floating around that I won't go super in-depth into as they aren't confirmed, but there is one which suggests that each dragon may correspond to a different mythology or region in the world, forming a Pandora's box of dragons. Or it could be a reference to the dragon which appeared in the book of Revelations in the Bible, which is also the devil. Now it's time for spoilers from the Index Light Novel beyond Index Season 3, so if you have haven't read this volume, you've been warned. Toma also has a form where he turned into a dragon called Dragon Shell. Seriously, what is it with light novel protagonists and turning into dragons? Toma could freely access this form after a presence within Imagine Breaker reached its limit and bursted, causing a doppelganger of himself to be released into the world and stealing Imagine Breaker from him. With this version of Toma, known as Kamijo no Toma, or KNT for short, while the original Toma we are familiar with no longer had his trademark illusion destroying power the dragon shell definitely compensated for it to some extent this form was unique in the sense that it is not the same as the dragons we have seen before with his appearance not matching the others. In the dragon shell form, Toma's physical attributes were obviously enhanced, being able to fly, move at supersonic speeds in bursts, and having a tough outer shell, which can even withstand Misuka's railgun. Although it is notably weaker than the other dragons we are familiar with, as it does not possess any crazy abilities or hacks, and the vulnerable parts of its body can be hurt with kitchen utensils. That's right, ordinary knives, forks, and spoons, which is pretty lame. After reclaiming Imagine Breaker, KNT then traded abilities with Toma, being able to access the dragon form for himself instead. So Toma is no longer able to use the dragon shell, but who knows, maybe it will reappear one day. Notably, the OG Toma's version of Dragon Shell is blue with yellow outlines, while KNT's version is reddish pink with green outlines. That's how you tell the difference. There is a theory regarding the meaning of the colours from the Philemic Holy Text, the Book of the Law, which Index does borrow many ideas from to begin with, such as Iwas and Alistair Crowley. This theory suggests that Toma, or the dragons, represent Hadith, a Philemic god, due to the passages in the book which sort of match the descriptions of the dragons. 
Chapter 2, Part 26 I am the secret serpent, coiled about to spring. 50 Blue am I, and gold in the light of my bride. But the red gleam is in my eyes, and my spangles are purple and green. Blue and gold referencing the OG Terma dragon shell. The red gleam in Terma's eye before the railgun dragon strike and purple and green for the KNT version of the shell. Well, it's more of a reddish pink, so it's not a concrete match, but I'll let you decide if it's close enough or not. Let me know your own theories regarding the dragons down below, and if you're hungry for more videos about Terma's powers, check out these ones on screen right now.